On this episode of the Procedurally Generated Show, Tony plays Crash and Ethan tinkers with robots. We talk about the week's biggest news and answer your questions. Everybody, welcome to the procedurally generated show. I'm your host Tony, and joining me this week, I've got Ethan. Hey, Tony. What's going on? We did not survive the zombie apocalypse. We did not survive the zombie apocalypse. I am sad to say. I mean, it took us an hour to get that far, so I'm willing to take the loss there. Maybe next time we can solve, the, say, we can survive the zombie apocalypse. Maybe. So. Uh, what he is referring to is our PG Plays episode from this week, which you can check out on YouTube if you haven't already. We played Left 4 Dead 2. We played Left for, We played the first level of Left 4 Dead on Left 4 Dead 2. That's true. We so, did. So it might the difficulty might have been ramped up more than it should have been on there for for that one because we had more uh, special zombies to deal with than normal, like a Charger and Spitter. As opposed to a hunter, smoker, and... Oh, what's the third one? There were apparently a lot of witches. Yeah, we ran into more witches than what I'm used to. What you used to, you might see maybe one every couple of areas, but no, this was like one or two every location. So, and Crazy. it was my first time playing Left 4 Dead 2, so... That was fun. So... But yeah, we will be doing spooky games all four weeks of October, culminating with what could be the most interesting video we've ever done. Maybe. So, I expect a lot of nope, 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 <laughs> nope. Well, we're working our way up towards more sp spooktacular thrills, I guess you could say, because you got to start out with you know fun, lightheartedness. So, you know, go so Left 4 Dead. Play, <laughs> why didn't we play Luigi's Mansion? I don't know. That would have been a good, fun, <laughs> that lighthearted would, That really Halloween would have game. been. <laughs> <laughs> so, hmm. I can't think of a more fun, lighthearted Halloween game than Luigi's Mansion. Well, you know what? costume quest. You know, you know what? I, I know a way we can make that happen. Okay. Oh, I, I, don't worry about the show part. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, my kids have been asking me to play Costume Quest, so I've been playing Costume Quest uh, for the last few days. Hmm. Which is... It, it, that is the perfect Halloween game, since that is all about trick-or-treating. It's the game where you get... What, what, it's like an RPG, and you get powers based on what you're wearing, right? Yep. Yeah, so like you start out with a robot costume and then you'll get something like I just got the costume for the Statue of Liberty and she shoots fire out of her little torch. Um or you'll get a knight who has a sword but then he can when you're on the overworld you can hold a shield up over your head to block like water and things from hitting you when you go under waterfalls and stuff like that. So hmm. And I think the first costume quest game is coming to Game Pass or Games with Gold this month. Oh, so you should play that because it's really good. Uh, but aside from the Halloween themed games, which is there's going to be a bunch of that this month. What else have you been playing? Uh, let's see. Yeah, what was it Thursday? I guess it was Thursday night. I got back from Izzy's after uh, we, we ended up cooking salmon and watching a movie. Uh, but I was like, man, I want to stream something. I tweeted out, I was like, I want to watch, or I was like, what should I stream? And I think you and Stuart were the only two that mentioned anything. I was like, yeah. those are horrible ideas. I'm not going to tell them that. <laughs> yeah, I said Bullet Witch. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so I, I was like, I'm just going to play Robo Trek. I haven't touched that game in a while, and I miss it. Yeah, I had the stream on for a little while watching you play. And everything's going good on there until I get to the boss. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but 
it, it is, it's going horrible. It's like, I can only do one point of damage to them and stuff. Them. Yeah, I, I saw that, and I had no idea what to do, because I've never played that game before, so I don't know if there was some weakness that you were coming up against that, you know, the well, boss Supposedly, had. like, guns are supposed to do more damage to them, but I've never been much of a gun user in that game. Yeah. And even when I did use a use my uh, more powerful gun, it, it didn't do anything to them, really. And then my like my main robot, he was just getting bodied by every attack by that thing. And then my backup robot, he he just takes one damage every attack. It's like, what is going on here? What did I do so different on these guys? So I I had some messed up stat allocation and stuff, but I don't know what's wrong with the damage output or. Or maybe the it well I'm playing this on emulator for streaming reasons because I don't want to hook up a Super Nintendo at the moment. And yes, I do own a physical copy of the game that I like. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't think it has pr any protection like that in the in the for against emulation or anything like that. It, it's just know. really weird. And if it if it does have emulation protection like that, it's going to be a. A uh, real grind fest on bosses in that game. Heck, even those sword guys I ran into were just just cutting me to shreds. Mm -hmm. I've I've never had this much difficulty with this game before, and this is this is like first dungeon stuff on here. It's like supposed to be easy cakewalk. Yeah, and it's it's one of those games that I've never played before, but I. I said while I was watching the stream that I should actually play this at some point because it's that old style RPG that I really, really enjoy. Yeah, it, it's it's a real charming little game. Uh, uh, I think I want to say it was part of like the Quintet trilogy, but I actually found out that was a different set of games. Yeah. But, you know, besides the point of that, still a fairly solid game. Have they done anything past that? Is there is this like a series? It is. It is its own. It is the only game in its uh, oh. of its whatever. Yeah. So there's no DS re-release. And believe me, I asked on that one. There was not. I, I begged <laughs> Konami, and they sent me an email back, and they're like, "Hey, we're happy that you're showing it." No, no not Konami. Uh, Enix, uh, uh, Square Enix. Yeah. Uh, emailed them. They're like, "Hey, we're happy that you showed interest in this, but we have no plans to do that right now." Oh, <laughs> it's my only reaction was sadness. Yeah, uh, I can imagine it would be. But I mean, the DS would have been perfect—a perfect re-release for that game. Everything on the bottom screen for your robots and items mm -hmm. stuff on there. Top screen, so you can still see the combat and all that. But you know, just. Just massively missed opportunity, but I, it, this this is basically a really really interesting uh, JRPG in my opinion. Still, just that you you build your own fighters like you uh, let's see two thousand three thousand and I think four thousand and you can is the cost for each one of your fighters in the game. So you, you, once you have that much money in the game, you can build that. And the first robot's basically given to you. Because you find a a uh, a load of money in the in the robot book, so, so you can do that. And I there, I had rolled over the cable for my headphones, so I was a little stuck for a second. Uh, but you build the robot, and by default, it's left hand gun, right hand uh, sword, backpacks a rocket launcher, and then you got boots one on. So, you know, the bare minimum of any robot is going to be that. And you know, you can swap out either arm for you can be like dual sword wielding or sword shield, dual shields, dual guns, lasers, uh, axes. Blades are considered different from swords. I don't ask me. I I just play the game. Uh, you can change out your backpacks to be better rocket launchers or even uh, boosters for like defense, offense. Uh, other things I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know like they, they just boost various stats in other words and then like each level up you get to go and in, back into your uh, the portable version of your workspace and you can build items from there combine items to make other items uh can't build the robots with the portable but 
I mean, you get to go in there and you can do your stat allocation. So it's like, all right, I can incre I get 10 points per level, so I can put that all into to increasing the robot's health. I can divide it up evenly. I can get some more power, speed, charge, defense, you, you know, just all the fun stuff that can go into that. And then you can program special moves as well where with just your three attacks on there. So, uh, so you have a rocket launcher, the gun, and then the sword. Uh, there's some weird combination you can put in on there, and it run the it runs it as a uh, as a program on there. So you ro you'll tell your robot to run that, and what it does, I don't know, depends on the combination of whatever you put in. But you can have one where your robot just glows, and then everything around it just explodes. But your but your uh, ATV bar, depending on what action you take, t may take longer to charge, less time to charge. Who knows? So, you, you just kind of have to plan it out on there and work with what you got. Hmm. Uh, and there's like a whole lot of exploration to this game. Start out just in your little part of the world, and then you expand to the rest of the world, and then. Uh, well, heck, the game's been out for a while. From the rest of the world, you end up expanding to space for exploration to go to other places and fight things. Very interesting. And as you level up, you go read books. That way you can learn more uh, things for your robot. It's like, oh, okay, now I can make this sword or this part. It's like, oh, now I have boot number three, so now my robot can move further in battle. And you can actually get up behind people at some point and do massive damage because you're attacking them from their blind spot. It's it's a game I wish had a sequel at this point. Yeah, it, it's one of those that has a good base that if they took and, and added some modern JRPG stuff to it, could be sounds like it could be really, really good. Mm-hmm. It's like if, like, if there was a modern version of this game where it's all 3D and stuff, I probably wouldn't like it as much. But this one right here, it's it's pretty a pretty solid game. Just it, just do another like Super Nintendo inspired, you know, visual design. You don't have to do a modern 3D. Oh, that's asking too much. Just Square Enix. Is it? It is. I mean, because what what they'll do is they'll re-release it on on uh, smartphones. Yeah, and, and it's going to be touch controls, and nothing's going to work, and people will complain, and then they'll like they'll be like, "All right, fine, here, have it on Steam," and then it's just going to be the smartphone being version being ported over. And it's like, no, yeah. we want the original, you idiots, come on. And it'll have high res text over, you know, sixteen bit visuals. I'm actually okay with that. There Which... was a game. There was a game I played the other, uh, other while back, and it. I, I wanted the uh, high res text over the pixelated text. It was just easier to read. Oh yeah. Yeah. It it was a thing. Okay. So yeah, Robo Trek Super Nintendo game by uh, Enix, which is now Square Enix. So. Yep, and just watching that video of yours, it may be one of those that I have to put on my list to play. And if for some reason you feel like you'd rather play the Japanese version, uh, Slapstick, that's the name of the game. Okay. Yeah, but it's probably got Japanese text, which would make it a little hard to play. It's a little different, not much. But yeah, Japanese text, definitely. Yeah, I, I don't I don't read <laughs> Japanese, so... I, I love how much Japanese actually stayed in this game. Like, your dad is Dr. Akihabara. Uh, really? Your, your mom's name is Nagisa. Well... Your mom's name is Nagisa, and then uh, your version of your mom is also Nagisa, but she's a robot housemaid. And then there's like Kotetsu and just other people like that. But then you have other characters like, I want to say there's a guy named Flavin, uh, a character named Mint. And it's, it's it's just this weird mishmash of character names. Yeah. It's it, It's enjoyable, but it doesn't quite top the uh, naming process of Brave Fencer Musashi characters because those are great. Like, All You Can Eat Kingdom, they're all based on food, and Thirst Quencher Empire, and they're all, all their names are just various drinks. Man. RPGs are weird with names. 
They can be. That is for sure. So what have you uh, been playing, Tony? Uh, well, I was originally this week going to talk about Genshin Impact, which is a brand new free to play game that's on PS4, PC and mobile. You heard me device. complain about it and said decided not to. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, because despite even the fact that you were complaining, I played it and it's good. It really is. Um, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'll talk about that maybe maybe next week if there's nothing else that, that comes up. The, the only thing I really mentioned to Tony, and I, I don't hate the game. I, I haven't seen anything other than that uh, it's using 2B's animations from uh, near Automata on a certain character. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's that. And it looks like Breath of the Wild, but that's that's pretty much all my complaints. Yeah, and it it those are valid complaints. It it does look like a Breath of the Wild Wild clone, but once you get pat, once you get into the game and realize, <laughs> oh, oh, you're just playing near Automata. <laughs> all of the no, it is not. It is not an action game like that. Um, it is definitely not anything inspired by a platinum game. Uh, it is closer to an action JRPG than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's good, but <laughs> no, we got in a review code for Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time this week, and I have been playing that. I put up a video on the YouTube channel that has twenty five, roughly 25 minutes early on in the game. I tried to get the first 30 minutes, but for some reason, the recording that I did missed out on uh, part of the tutorial level. Weird. So Maybe it's blocked. I don't know. That's weird. I didn't get I think well I think it's my PlayStation is set up to record in 30 minute chunks oh. and so I, th I think I hit the record button at the wrong time um, and had gone like 32 or 33 minutes into the game before okay. I hit the you know record this button or okay. save the recording button so uh, you miss out on the first couple of minutes but it I do get the last little bit of the tutorial level and the first few cutscenes and then uh, two or three levels into the game in the 25 minute video. And I, I've said this multiple times across multiple places now. Uh, and the thing you're going to hear me say about the game most is that it's just utterly charming. Everything about the game is incredibly full of charm. Like the, the new character models all look really good. They've got a lot of detail, uh, show off a lot of emotion um, and they use it to really good effect, especially with Crash and all of the, the funny facial, you know, faces that he makes. Yeah, just that short video I watched, just him looking at, at that that giant thing as the other mask, the mask ran off already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just, he's hyperventilating almost, I think is what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's really, really good. Uh, the The character voices are fantastic. Like they've done a really good job uh, bringing these characters to life. It feels very much like, almost like a children's cartoon brought to life in those cutscenes. They've done a really, really good job with everything visually about the game. Um, one of the cool things is that you know the game has tons of costumes and. As you collect them, you can go in between levels. You can change out characters. You can play as Crash or Coco in every level. Nice. Um, they play exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. It's just a personal preference. And then each of them have, I don't know, 25 or 30 different costumes that they'll be able to wear. Um, if not more. I didn't count, but I know it's, it's a really high number of, of things. And those costumes are all integrated everywhere in the game in the levels in the cutscenes. so uh and that's one thing i thought okay they're not going to do that but i hit a cutscene in in between one of the levels i switched the costumes and it played a cutscene, and it brought over i did like the caveman crash and then one of coco from that looks she's decked out in like robotic armor looking stuff oh and the characters were decked out in those outfits in the cutscenes as well and fully animated and everything. So, uh, 
it's they they've put a lot of work into this. This is developed by Toys for Bob, which is the same people that did the Skylanders games. And I th think they did did they do both Spyro and Crash the remakes? Uh, good question. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure they did the Crash remake, the Insane trilogy. I'm double checking right now real quick. Um, yeah, you'll have to Game check develop. for me and see. Crash Bandicoot and Spyro Reignited. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I thought they did. Um, wow, they've they become did, like, sort of the Skylanders games. Holy cow! Yeah, they 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 were the main developers after I think Vicarious Visions had done some of them. Star Control, Star Control Two, oh. The Horde, Pandemonium. I know that game. It looks like a weird game. I was like, I'm not playing that crap. <laughs> like, Toys for Bob has become sort of Activision's retro developer. Um bringing back some of the older characters that they've got in their library. Um, and so they've taken this and Crash Bandicoot 4 is basically retconning a bunch of Crash Bandicoot games out of existence. Um, and saying that this is the first real sequel to Crash Bandicoot 3. And I think that is really the case because I think after Crash 3, they started changing things up quite a bit. Um, but this one goes right back and uses a lot of the gameplay elements from the crash, the original crash trilogy. Uh, so if you've played the insane trilogy recently, you know exactly what you're getting into with this game. It has a lot of the same issues that the, that crash trilogy has th that I call issues because there, there are things I don't really like, like the camera. It's totally being, issues. Uh, the camera being a problem with like the levels where you're going towards and away from the camera. Uh, it's really hard to see some of the platforming elements. Uh, and the jumps are, I think, a little harder to control than maybe they should be. Uh, they try to give you some help by putting a little glowing circle on the ground where Crash is. So you can see if the circle's there on a platform, he's going to land on that platform. Um, but it's sort of one of those things where you're committed to a jump and you can't really change the uh, traje trajectory of that jump very much after you've hit the jump button. So you have to be really precise with your jumps in the platforming sections. Okay. Sounds like um, a Crash Bandicoot game. It is, it, is exa it is a Crash Bandicoot game in every way. They have made some tweaks to it and because of that it does feel better um, it's still not like, you know, you're, you're not getting into like Mario 3D, uh, which I think is sort of the, the pinnacle of 3D platforming. Um, some people may think differently. But uh, so with like the, the segments, and this is something you had noticed when we were watching a little bit of the video before the show, uh, the camera is pulled back just a little bit further from crash when you're doing those sections like where you're running straight towards the camera yeah uh, yeah i was really noticing that because that's one of the things like i haven't played a crash bandicoot game still which i'm gonna change that really soon but just seeing that makes me feel a lot better about the fourth game but i'm gonna start with the trilogy mm -hmm. yeah so so with that camera being pulled it's not a lot it's just a little bit but it's enough that it gives you a split second longer to make decisions about where you need to go and when you need to jump when you're running straight towards the camera. Uh, and so because of that, some of those complaints that I've had about that original trilogy, while they're still there, they're not quite as strong, you know, or as big an issue as they were previously. Um, and so because of that, this game feels a lot better and I, I actually am liking this game a lot more than i did uh the insane trilogy which i've only played the first game all the way through i've i've touched a little bit of crash 2 and a little bit of crash 3 um, but this feels a whole lot better to play than uh crash 1 uh the bosses have been really fun i think i've done three boss fights in the game uh so they're broken up by multiple segments but before i get to that i guess i should say they've tweaked also the way that 
progression works. So you have two different types of gameplay that you can do, what they call modern or retro. Uh, retro is you get a set number of lives. Mm -hmm. You'll get, you know, you'll earn one ups and things like that in the game. But if you run out of lives, it's game over. You have to start, you know, with, you know, just, you know, you start back with a set number of lives again. Right, those right. Lives reset. Uh, or you can do modern where you have infinite lives and it's got a you know generous checkpointing system, uh, but it keeps track of how many times you've died. And it <laughs> keeps it prominently displayed on the screen so you can see it at all times. It is there. If that count, if that number starts to get high, you're like, man, I just I, I want to stop. You feel so guilty <laughs> at that point. Yeah, a little bit. Um, so when you get to like boss fights and stuff, you know they you know boss fights in all these games traditionally have multiple segments. Where you know three, you have to you know, attack the boss three times before they're actually finally dead. So in this one, the first boss fight that you come up against, it is a guy playing a drum set off in the distance, and then uh, he's throwing attacks at you from the top of the screen to the bottom. It looks very reminiscent of like Guitar Hero, um, and you have to avoid those attacks. And every once in a while, one of his attacks will be. A, a like a miniature version of him who has fire coming out of his head and you have to spin attack those and send them back to him and you have to do that three times before you can actually run up the conveyor belt that you're on attack him and then it starts the second segment so each segment of the boss fight is then segmented additionally um but if you finish one of those segments of the boss fight and you die, you don't have to start the boss fight over again. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, the boss fights are checkpointed. So if you finish that first segment, you, ha you don't have to replay that again. You just start at the beginning of segment two. Um, and then if you complete segment two and you die in the third segment, you just, you just restart the third segment of the fight over again. Which is really nice because one of the things, one of the bad things about those early crash games was if you got really close to defeating the boss and you die and you run out of lives, that's it. You have to start that boss fight all over again. And that got really frustrating in some of those boss fights. Um, yeah. So they. I, I just, I, I'm just saying, yeah, because I remember watching Let's Plays of the original like the original and the trilogy just mm -hmm. you die in a boss fight you're back all the way at the start of the entire thing of the and yeah just, the checkpoints that that's amazingly better <laughs> so they've just what they've done is they've taken uh the crash gameplay and t made small tweaks to it just to make it feel better and less punishing to the player so you know failure in the game doesn't send you back a considerable amount like it like it did previously hmm. so um basically this game is the best version of what crash bandicoot could be and it feels while it still feels very much like a game from the early 2000s it's tweaked enough that it it's fun it's really fun to play I would, so, I, mean, I would hope so. <laughs> so, you know, people will you know look at those old games and are like, "Yeah, I remember that game. It was really, really hard." But I had a lot of fun playing it. And going back to a game from you know the late '90s to the early 2000s today feels like it. They can be really unfair to the player. Um, and you sort of give those games from that era a pass when you play them. But you don't want that anymore when you're playing a game that's been released recently. Hmm. And maybe that's just me, but you know, I want games to you know respect the amount of time that I've put into them <laughs> and not not punish me excessively for failing. Do you want to start a game? Yes. Do you want us to respect your time or let you play the way we intended? <laughs> Uh, just put it on easy and let me see the story. That's there you go. It just it has an option. It's just do you have a day job? Yes or no? Yeah, day job mode or student mode. That's what they're called. Perfect. Uh, so, 
so yeah, I've been having a ton of fun with the game and and I don't think getting to the end of this game is going to be as much of a chore as getting through Crash 1 felt. Uh, and so when I finally finished Crash 1 and beat Dr. Cortex, I was like, I was more relieved than I was that I, feeling accomplished at having finished the game. Oh. And, and I don't think I'm going to have that same feeling this time around. Okay. So... Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, is a funny pun because they use some time travel elements in the game uh, and and do a lot. They sort of break the fourth wall a lot with this uh, uh, being the fourth game when there's already technically been a Crash Bandicoot 4. So they have a what lot of What are you talking fun. about? This is the only Crash Bandicoot 4. There hasn't been any others after this. <laughs> That's the, there you go. That's true. So <laughs> I haven't played any of those other older Crash Bandicoot games. So as far as I'm concerned, they don't exist. But maybe I should go play them at some point. Well, I mean, there's one where Crash spoke and, and it was like, that's his voice. Ew. But we're glad that doesn't exist anymore. He, I don't remember Crash uh, talking. It, it, it was like right at the. Talking. It was like right at the very end. He says pancakes, <laughs> and there was like a weird. It was like they had a guy in an echo chamber saying it. It was like, why? Yeah, yeah. Now that you mention it, I don't think Crash talks in this game. I think he's silent, and everybody yeah. else around him is the, are the ones. Yeah, he talk. he really doesn't say anything. Uh. I forget what the condition is called, but apparently he has it. And it's not mute. Well, it's partial mute thing, but I don't. He's, I forget what it's called. It's like he's just got silent protagonist syndrome. Like he, he can talk, he just he doesn't because reasons. I think it was yeah. a game theory video, and I don't feel like looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's what I've been playing this week. It's been Genshin Impact, Crash Bandicoot Four, and now some Left for Dead. So, uh. Let's take a quick break now. We will come back and we'll talk about the news. So, Ethan. What up? The newest <laughs> the newest character to be added to Super Smash Brothers was announced this week. You know, let's rewind a bit. First of all, we have to acknowledge that Sonic hit Mario so hard he knocked him into another game. He did. That was a punch. Unfortunately, that game was Minecraft. <laughs> Unfortunately? Nah, people are... I, I, there's people that are happy for this, and it honestly, it's about time it happened. Cause it, it, this was... You know, when they first started announcing all of the DLC fighters, I said it was inevitable that if there's going to be a Microsoft representative with, you know, it, it started around the time of Banjo-Kazooie being announced. But I said, if there's going to be a, a, a Microsoft character announced, it was going to be Steve from Minecraft. It just seemed like a no-brainer. Uh, and during that first... It's, it's, really hard to, it's really hard to realize that that's what, uh, you know, Steve is just Steve, and that's all he looks like underneath all, all of the Master Chief armor. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know how he fits in the Master Chief armor, <laughs> uh, as blocky as he is, but he does a good job somehow. Um, <laughs> I, I, it just it seemed like a no brainer that you were going to get this character in the game at some point, and it has finally happened. Uh, apparently, they've been trying to do this since 2015, but it's never really worked out. Sakurai didn't seem too excited to put Steve <laughs> from Minecraft into I, the game. I don't think he had enough time to work for this on this character stuff, which is why he wasn't as happy. But so, you, you would think he'd be, been more excited. It's like, oh, wow, this is something I didn't get to do a lot of work on, so I get to mess with this now. They apparently had to do a ton of work to get this character to work in Smash Brothers. Uh, because he has a lot of, they bring a lot of Minecraft stuff where Steve can build things when he's fighting. Um, but because of that, 
every single level in the game required reworking. Hmm. So this wasn't just, we can put some blocks down on the thing. Apparently they had to do something to every single level in the game to get the Minecraft bits of this character to work properly inside Smash Brothers. It, so, it, it's like basically just doing a, a complete overhaul of the game at that point, right? Pretty much. Um, and I have seen four of the different variants of... It, it's not just Steve from Minecraft, really. It is Minecraft character in Smash because you also you have Steve, you can play as Alex. They're the same play, character, just different skins. Yeah, I mean, that, it's, it's like the Dragon Quest hero thing where it's technically eight different characters but it's really just one character mm -hmm. with eight different variants um, so you got steve you got alex you can play as an enderman or a zombie those are the four i've seen i don't know if they showed off any more yeah, today. uh there's uh two additional scans for alex uh i, th I forget what, what those are and then there's also two additional scans for steve which is the tennis guy the blonde with the the tennis outfit and, and then like and then the one, other one is who is what I would call Jack from Achievement Hunter. No, no, no. Ryan from Achievement Hunter. Jack is Trials guy. <laughs> uh it, it's the one it's one like the tuxedo and kilt thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> I I associate that more with Ryan from Achievement Hunter. <laughs> okay. So so, like the day that I announced it was live, Achievement Hunter was. Some of them were. Some of those guys were making comments like, "Why didn't I just make my my character the def default skin so I can canonically be in another in Smash in another game?" <laughs> so yeah, they showed off apparently how the character plays. They showed off his move set a little more today during Minecraft Live. I haven't watched that yet, so I don't know exactly how Steve plays. Uh, Plays he'll like be out Minecraft. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, he'll be out on October thirteenth, so pretty soon. I expect that the uh, eShop servers will explode when. Uh, of course, they will. You can actually un when you can actually download him, because uh, I would not be surprised to see this character be the most downloaded character of all of the DLC characters that have been available. Uh, it will be very hard to actually get in and download him as soon as he's available. Well, so you might it's know. not so much that people are just going to be going nuts to download him, which I think the game's going to automatically do do that just for the background side of it. Because when you play online, you can still encounter him, even if you don't have the thing, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think people are going to go more nuts for uh, trying to download the other stuff that was announced alongside the... Uh, yeah, we have six new Me Fighter costumes. Uh, three of them are Minecraft related. You can you'll be able to use uh, Creeper or Pig. Uh, both of those are brawlers. Mm -hmm. And then you'll also be able to give your Me Fighter diamond armor, and that's for the Sword Fighter character. Yep. Uh, then there's also Gil from Tower of Draga. I like the typo there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I, miss, I don't even know how I missed uh, mistyped that. Uh, I, I was just sitting here looking. I was like, "Is he going to say power or tower?" No, I knew it was tower. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> uh, Bomberman. People or... are happy for that, I guess. I mean, I am I sure. Uh, I mean, there are Konami characters in the game. It makes sense to have Bomberman in there. Uh, and then Travis Touchdown. This one is good and sad at the same time. Because this... we're not going to get an actual Travis Touchdown character? Right. Yeah. But we have Travis Touchdown. So the, yeah. game, the game is acknowledged, and you can basically dress your me up as Travis. So there you go. And you get the lightsaber, so... Yeah. There you go. So you can, you can customize his moveset however you want it to be. So uh, let's see real quickly. We'll go over some of the other stuff from Minecraft live. That was this week or earlier today. Um, 
there's going to be a new update to Minecraft early next year called the Caves and Cliffs update. Which will add caves and cliffs to the game, finally. It's been forever since they've, you know, this game has needed caves, it's needed cliffs, it's never had them before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, no, they're going to they're gonna change the way that caves and mountains are generated in the game. Uh, I guess to make it more, easier to explore caves. More cavey and more mountainy and cliffy. Yeah. Uh, new mobs are getting added to the game, included. I think the fan vote ended up being the glow squid. So, so it's a glowing squid. It's a glowing squid. It looks like a it looks a little bit like a slime block with tentacles. Okay, I'm good I'm good with that. So you know, uh, I don't even see why they bothered. They should just give us all three. It was between I mean, Moo Bloom, Ice uh how do you say that? Isolager. Isolager. Which I guess is like a what, a villager in the an Eskimo villager? Yeah. Well, he's got red eyes, so it's probably a villain. Yeah, he's he's going to be like the Illagers or yeah. whatever. And then Glow Squid. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see them all eventually come to the game, but Glow Squid will come first. <laughs> Just walking around your farm at night and there's a glowing cow. Uh, they are also adding axolotls to the game, which will be adorable. Axolotls. Why, why am I drawing the blank on that? I can only imagine why. I mean, what an axolotl will look like. Uh, oh, are those those things with like the? You know, you know they're they're little salamanders with like yeah 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 yeah. Their heads. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a, some video game reference that I could pull up right now. I just can't think of what it is. Yeah, uh, it's probably a Pokemon reference. Don't don't worry about it. I, I was so. going through the page trying to find a picture of it. And I wasn't seeing one. Hmm. Yeah. So they will be added to the game. And I know one of my children will go nuts because they think axolotls are one of the cutest things on planet Earth. So. Uh, that should be should be fun. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons is getting a new update as well to add a new area called Howling Peaks, which will add a new island, new mobs, a new golem boss. So that'll be fun. Uh, the old golem fights, man. 20 new difficulty levels. Oh. So we can't even do fun. normal difficulty levels. <laughs> Uh, new enchantments and gear for the players as well. Good. And when that Howling Peaks DLC comes, crossplay will be added to the game as well. Okay. Which has been much needed. Uh, much needed since day one. Yes, it has been much needed since day one. Because I would like to play the game on PC. But uh, we've been playing on the Xbox. It's not that bad. It's just it's no, like it's not. And... Um, the one thing I really wish they'd add is cross progression, so that you can bring you can bring your Xbox save over to the PC if you want, and back and forth, and vice versa, and all that stuff. So, unfortunately, that's not coming. But I really wish it was. Yeah. Uh. But that was the biggest news from Minecraft Live that happened earlier today. Uh, Do you know what else er came out, like, I guess today? Uh, and I had completely forgotten about this. I am kicking myself. New Dragon Quest anime. Yes, a brand new Dragon Quest anime. It's called Dragon Quest Anime. That's all. Uh, I, it just says Dragon DQ anime in the notes. I didn't fill it in or anything. Yeah, uh, I had it pulled up. It's on Hulu, uh, and they are live streaming it. I mean, not live streaming it. Yep. Simulcasting it with <laughs> um, a Crunchyroll or Funimation. One of the two. Yes. Uh, it's called Dragon Quest: The Adventure of Die. The first episode is out on Hulu. If you would like to watch it, it is subbed. 
So no dub, just a sub. So subtitles only, no English voice acting. Friends don't let friends watch anime uh, no, if, dubbed. No, if you're watching anime, it should be subbed. You know, if you're watching anime, you should just be watching anime. It doesn't matter whether it's subbed or dubbed. Just take it however you can get it. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, and I do. I, I I can't say that subbed is the only way to watch it because if I'm if I've got it on at work and I'm listening to it, I have to have the English exactly. voice acting. Uh, because um, I usually. Are, do you have the have same thing where if you watch if you like let's say with the Dragon Quest one, if you started that in English, you're gonna have to watch the whole thing in English, or would you be able to do it in Japanese? Um, I think it depends on the show. There are some like I cannot watch My Hero Academia in English. I just I can't do okay. it. Um, so I for the most part, if I start it in one thing, it, that is the way those characters sound. So I have to finish it in that uh most of the time it's been japanese with like my hero academia or uh the other one that i cannot remember the name of the the demon dog dude uh demon dog with the the, the tetsu saiga sword thing why can i not remember the name of this character demon you know tetsu. red clothes white hair oh inuyasha yeah, Inuyasha. Why could that? I, I had gone blank. Uh, <laughs> I was like, "What?" <laughs> I can't watch that I, in English. It's like I've I've known about this show for years. Why can't I not recall what he's talking about? That has to be in Japanese as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that uh, sells at work is one that I watched in English, and I can't watch that in Japanese. Okay. Okay. So. Generally, if I if I was if I started in one language, I have to keep watching it in that language. So, uh, but yeah, I will be watching every episode of this Dragon Quest anime because it's Dragon Quest. I have to watch it; it's required <laughs> at this point. Uh, let's see, and then I guess our last little bit of news this week is. Something that I think needs to happen for a lot of things. GOG, good old games, is testing out the ability to purchase games from other digital storefronts. They're doing this through their uh, Galaxy 2.0 program. The uh, Yes, their launcher that you download on your PC. Uh, right now, it is in beta, and... Participants in the beta can purchase some games from the Epic Game Store through good old games. And this comes uh, just after uh, the update that allowed you to go and add games from all your other, like Steam and Epic Game yeah. Store, Xbox. And Microsoft. Yeah. Like, all, like, if I open up my good old games right now, it's got, like, over 500 games in there. Yeah, mine's and, got 300. And it's like, it's like, actually, I only have, like, 30 games in GOG, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I own it's one game. everything in there. <laughs> <laughs> I own one game in GOG, and I've got a library of over 300-something games. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, which is really nice. So if you want to just open up one thing, good old games is the launcher to do. It does then send you to the other launcher to actually open the game you can't you can't start the game from good old games um it would so be kind of nice to see like some integration where they all have this agreement to make it work in this in just that one but i doubt that'll ever happen but you know probably. this this is kind of a step in that direction sort of but not so it, it's really nice to see and uh, one of the good things about this is that if you buy a game through good old games, it is covered by their refund policy and not like Epic Games' policy. Oh. Uh, so right now, Epic Games, if you buy a game through them, you have 15 days to request a refund if you've played it less than two hours, I believe. Yeah, that uh, sounds about right. And good old games is 30 days. And I, I, th I think Steam has the same issue player. on that one, don't know, or is it a week? Uh, I think Steam is two weeks. Two weeks? Okay. I think so. I think they have the same as Epic. It's the two weeks, two hours thing. Okay, okay. And I want to say good old games is, thir is, is 30, 
and they may not have a limit to how much you've played. I don't know for sure. Nah, they do want to keep a limit on there or else they would hurt their uh, PR stuff. So, um, I need to look that up and see exactly what the refund policy is. Cause I, I, I swear I had seen that, but no, okay, no, it is. I think it's two hours as well. Uh, let's see. Good old games. Starting now, you can get a full refund 30 days, even if you've downloaded, launched, and played it. I guess this they don't is... have a way of tracking how long you've played it for on through the other launchers, then. So probably not. Okay, that explains part of it. So I, I can see people abusing that quite easily. It it is entirely possible. I think they're, you know, they're going more on the we're taking, you know, your word that you're not going to completely take advantage of this system. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a really interesting, uh, th thing that has happened. And I'm surprised, um, first of all, I am surprised that something like this would ever happen, but it's nice to see it. And if this works, it would be really nice to see other companies going along with this as well. I don't expect like Microsoft to do this, but. Uh, maybe like Ubisoft would get in on this because Ubisoft is like, we'll do whatever as long as people are playing our games. We don't care. Um, yeah, true. You know, you want to stream it? We'll give you every streaming service known to man. Just do whatever. Just play our Ubisoft games, please. So uh, I'm going to keep an eye on this and see exactly where this goes and, and what the the response is to this from players because it's it's a neat thing that's happening we're starting to see a little bit more uh unification in some things that previously we might never have seen before so uh the next few years in the world of video games is going to be pretty interesting oh yes so game new consoles coming out next month PC streaming stuff is, is uh, doing things. Amazon's getting into the streaming business. Stadia's dying. I don't know that Stadia is dying, but they're not thriving. That's for sure. The opposite of thriving is uh, dying. Oh, but I did see, and I don't know if you've seen this, uh, the new uh, Google streaming stick, whatever thing you plug into the TV. It doesn't uh, support. It doesn't support Stadia. They did say there's an update uh, that they plan to update to support it in the future. Yeah. Whether they follow through with that or not is a very Chromecast. Google. That's what yeah, it is. a very Google thing to do, whether they follow through or not. So, there you go. It should be interesting. Uh, I am. We're just a few weeks out from Luna, and I'm hoping that I get into the the early access program with that. Cause I want to test that out and see how it works. Um, but I guess that will be it for the show this week, unless you have any other th news that you want to mention before we go, uh, send us names of scary games that you want us to try, yes. uh, yes. be generous to our wallets because we, uh, don't want to have to spend a lot of money on anything. So like, you know, if a game's $5, that's one thing, but if it's like, 60 well you know if it's like 30 to 60 we're probably not going to do that probably. uh i would highly recommend looking around the horror section at itch.io itch.io uh that's got a lot of free games in there that we can try out and uh yeah all right yeah because all this month we will be doing spooky horror games and, and for... we kind of we kind of want to work our way up to the more scary stuff so yeah so uh you know put you know kind of kind of suggest when you think we should probably play that yep all right well that will be the show for this week ethan so thank you very much for being here glad we didn't wait no we did no oh zombies dang <laughs>
<laughs> we didn't survive the podcast either. Spoiler. If you want to reach out to us, we have new ways to do so. You can email us at proceduraallygeneratedent at gmail.com. If you like what we do, you can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash pgent. Patreon supporters get the video version of the podcast a day early. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash progenint. Check out our YouTube channel, and we still have that famous Facebook group where you can interact with us on a daily basis as well.